Evaluate the limit. This is a two-variable limit. Clearly, directly substituting x equals 0, and y equals 0, gives the indeterminate form, 0 over 0. Since this is a limit of a function of two variables, we cannot use L. Hopital's rule, as L. Hopschel's rule only applies to functions of a single variable. Then, how to evaluate the limit? We notice that, the limit contains sine of x, and sine of y. The Taylor series expansion for sine of x about x equals 0 is, sine of x equals x minus x cubed over 3 factorial, plus x to the power of 5 over 5 factorial, and so on. So, sine squared of x, equals x squared, minus x to the power of 4 over 3, plus big O of x to the power of 6. Which can be written as, x squared, plus big O of x to the power of 4. Similarly, sine to the power of 4 of y, equals y to the power of 4, plus big O of y to the power of 6. Then, the given function, can be written as, x squared plus y to the power of 4, plus big O of y to the power of 6, over x squared plus y to the power of 4, plus big O of x to the power of 4. Next, we factor out x squared plus y to the power of 4, from both the numerator and the denominator. Then, x squared plus y to the power of 4, in the numerator, and that in the denominator cancel. So, the function is now equal to, 1 plus big O of y to the power of 6, over x squared plus y to the power of 4, over 1 plus big O of x to the power of 4, over x squared plus y to the power of 4. We let, u equal big O of y to the power of 6, over x squared, plus y to the power of 4, and v equal big O of x to the power of 4, over x squared, plus y to the power of 4. Then, the function can be written as, 1 plus u, over 1 plus v. We know that, 1 over 1 plus v, can be written as a geometric series, 1 minus v, plus v squared, minus v cubed, and so on. The geometric series converges, when the modulus of v is less than 1. So, 1 plus u, over 1 plus v, can be written as, 1 plus u, times 1 minus v, plus v squared, minus v cubed, and so on which is equal to, 1 plus u, minus v, plus big O of u v, plus big O of v squared. Recall that, u equals big O of y to the power of 6, over x squared, plus y to the power of 4, and v equals big O of x to the power of 4, over x squared, plus y to the power of 4. So, the function can now be written as, 1 plus big O of y to the power of 6, over x squared plus y to the power of 4, minus big O of x to the power of 4, over x squared plus y to the power of 4, plus big O of x to the power of 4, times y to the power of 6, over x squared plus y to the power of 4 all squared, plus big O of x to the power of 8, over x squared plus y to the power of 4 all squared. We know that, the modulus of big O of y to the power of 6, must be less than or equal to, c1y to the power of 6, for some constant c1. And x squared plus y to the power of 4, must be greater than or equal to, y to the power of 4. So, the modulus of big O of y to the power of 6, over x squared plus y to the power of 4, is less than or equal to, c1y to the power of 6, over y to the power of 4, which is equal to, c1y squared, which tends to 0, as y tends to 0. Thus, by the squeeze theorem, big O of y to the power of 6, over x squared plus y to the power of 4, tends to 0, as x tends to 0, and y tends to 0. Similarly, the modulus of big O of x to the power of 4, must be less than or equal to, c2x to the power of 4, for some constant c2. And x squared, plus y to the power of 4, must be greater than or equal to x squared. So, the modulus of big O of x to the power of 4, over x squared plus y to the power of 4, is less than or equal to, c2x to the power of 4, over x squared, which is equal to, c2x squared, which tends to 0, as x tends to 0. Thus, by the squeeze theorem, big O of x to the power of 4, 
over x squared plus y to the power of 4, tends to 0, as x tends to 0, and y tends to 0. The modulus of big O of x to the power of 4, times y to the power of 6, must be less than or equal to C3x to the power of 4, times y to the power of 6, for some constant C3. Because x squared plus y to the power of 4 all squared, minus 2x squared, times y to the power of 4, is equal to, x to the power of 4, plus y to the power of 8, which is greater than or equal to 0. So, x squared plus y to the power of 4 all squared, must be greater than or equal to, 2x squared, times y to the power of 4. So, the modulus of big O of x to the power of 4, times y to the power of 6, over x squared plus y to the power of 4 all squared, is less than or equal to, c3x to the power of 4, times y to the power of 6, over 2x squared, times y to the power of 4, which is equal to, c3 over 2x squared, times y squared, which tends to 0, as x tends to 0, and y tends to 0. Thus, by the squeeze theorem, big O of x to the power of 4, times y to the power of 6, over x squared plus y to the power of 4 all squared, tends to 0, as x tends to 0, and y tends to 0. The modulus of big O of x to the power of 8, must be less than or equal to, c4x to the power of 8, for some constant c4. Because x squared plus y to the power of 4 all squared, minus x to the power of 4, is equal to, 2x squared, times y to the power of 4, plus y to the power of 8, which is greater than or equal to 0. So, x squared plus y to the power of 4 all squared, is greater than or equal to, x to the power of 4. So, the modulus of big O of x to the power of 8, over x squared plus y to the power of 4 all squared, is less than or equal to, c4x to the power of 8, over x to the power of 4, which is equal to, c4x to the power of 4, which tends to 0, as x tends to 0. Thus, by the squeeze theorem, big O of x to the power of 8, over x squared plus y to the power of 4 all squared, tends to 0, as x tends to 0, and y tends to 0. Then, from identity 1, we know that, the required limit is equal to 1. 